When we're planning, we're looking at three different levels. They can be defined as an underground level, like geology and subsoil and morphology of the terrain. We can also look at the occupation level, with buildings, parks on it, you name it. And there's the network level, water, railways, roads, those kind of things. In GIS, they have different aspects as well. In this video, we'll be looking at networks. That opens up a whole new dimension in GIS. Luckily, it's a linear dimension. In this case, we'll be looking at distances. Network and network calculations are being used a lot in everyday life. Your navigation system is designed to do exactly that. Find the shortest or fastest route. Depending on the level of sophistication, it changes with your mode of transportation. That means that somewhere in the data, bicycle path can be separated from motorways. Actually, it goes a bit further than that, and in this video we'll encounter some of those filter possibilities. In planning, networks can be used as well. It can answer questions like, how many people live in walking distance of a new supermarket? And if you plan a certain industrial development, um, will trucks be able to drive there without using residential roads? There are different possibilities to do calculations in QGIS, depending on your needs, but let's first start with the data. If you go to the Geofabrik download website, you can find a lot of OpenStreetMap downloads there. Um, they make them available, I think it is every night, uh, for different uh, areas and different subsets. So let's have a look here. Uh, we'll download Europe. Uh, not completely Europe, of course, but we're interested in the Netherlands. And as you can see, the Netherlands is divided again in provinces. So if we uh, visit Zuid-Holland here, um, you can download the shapefiles um, from this link. I did that already and interesting enough, as you can see here, the shapefiles are divided already um, into buildings, land use, etc. And there's also a subset especially for railroads and for roads. So we're going to have a look at the roads shapefile. So I've loaded the data from OpenStreetMap, the roads layer that is, into QGIS. And there are some things you have to know about OpenStreetMap. It is a worldwide data set. Uh, that means that the coordinate system that it works in is WGS84. Here you see the EPSG code 4326. Now I know that in network calculations, I want to do my calculations in meters. So that means that I have to reproject this data set. That is pretty simple. I just made an export of it. I saved the features as a geo package, uh, which I've of course found here. But the important thing to do here is change the coordinate reference system to the Dutch coordinate reference system. If you do that and you save your data, you get something like this. The roads from OpenStreetMap, if you visualize them by category, there are a lot of different classifications that are being used. And the trick, of course, is knowing which ones to select and which ones not. And that depends, of course, very much on your goal. If you're interested in accessibility of a supermarket, footpaths and cycleways may be the way to go, especially if it's a local supermarket. But if you're looking for industrial transportation, uh, you might want to switch off the cycleways, the footways, the paths, etc. Perhaps even the residential roads and that will lighten your network a bit so that you're only using the actual roads that you want to take into account in your calculation. What I'm doing now, switching on and off different uh, visualizations, it doesn't help. The road is still there if you switch it off. You really have to make a filter or make a selection that you use. But this gives you a good insight and it also gives you the possibility to zoom into an area that you know and to see if the roads that you're actually using are the correct ones. So use this as a kind of a, an idea to find which categories you need in your analysis. In this case you see it it's like, looks like a broken network. I've looked up this one and it uh, seems to be a surface road. So if you switch off the surface roads as well, you find that that might be better for you. In this case, 
there's a living street. So let's switch off the living streets as well, because we don't want those in our main transportation network. I'll give you a short example now of how to use this network analysis. And I'm doing something very wrong here. Um, so pay attention and let's see if you found what happens and what I did wrong. I've made this selection from the Lisa data set again. These are all areas for storage and um, transshipment. And I want to see which ones are within a reasonable distance from something we're doing here in Delft at the Faculty of Architecture, for example. Uh, so we go to network analysis and we can do a shortest path and we'll be doing that from layer to point. Layer to point as in we're using the points from this layer and we're using a single point, the faculty of architecture. So the vector layer for the road network is the uh, geo package uh, network that I made from the original data. Um, the vector layer with the starting points are the filtered data sets from the Lisa data and the endpoint I'll just uh, click and I'll click it here. Um, where are we here? There's the faculty, the entrance. Uh, direction field I'll leave all the advanced parameters just as they are and I'll make a temporary layer. And as you can see this is slow. All right, so we're there, but as you can see, there's quite a few points that have no start point. And that is interesting. Why is that happening? Let's have a look. Okay, let's first zoom into the shortest path. We zoom to layer and we find that it is using the network, um, the province of South Holland. However, the Lisa data set was for all of the country. So it has been calculating way too many points here. Another thing is that if you look at this road where it's going, um, it, this all comes from Delft here. We are at the center at, uh, at the faculty. Um, let's have a look. So let's make this a bit thicker, this line. And we could also use the layer rendering again to multiply the features so that we can see where lines follow a similar path. But if I'm looking here, I see that if, if we're, we're looking at transportation and we're looking at, this looks like a bicycle path to me. So what happened here? Let's identify this one. As you can see, it's a cycleway. Uh, so I didn't filter my network data. And that means that these trucks going to these shipment areas, they will pass over a bicycle path now. Okay, so that's all the issues you can encounter. But what do we have now? And that is interesting. Let's have a look. I'll switch off the roads. And as you can see here, we've got a nice network. If I look at the uh, attribute table for the shortest path, you see it's quite a, a, a large table. Um, but there's one interesting thing here, and that is all the way at the end, there's a cost and the cost that is the length of this data set for every line. So here there's three kilometers, there's six kilometers, eight kilometers, etc. So these four here are the ones that we're interested in because they're less than 10 kilometers away. And as you can see there, we have these four points here that we can say, okay, do, those are within 10 kilometers. Now we've been doing this network calculation using the OpenStreetMap data that we downloaded. And we calculated everything locally. But you could also use an external service. For example, in the plugin called the ORS tools, which stands for Open Route Service, uh, you can make a simple isochrone layer. Let's build a couple of isochrones originating at the Faculty of Architecture. So we go to the isochrones. Uh, we use the open root service as a provider. And if you first check in here, you need an API key that you can just download as a free key. As input point, we'll just point something from the map canvas. In this case, we'll put pointing at the entrance here of the building again. Let's assume we travel by car. And as dimensions, we use in minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes. 
Let's see what it happens in a temporary layer again. Now this is processing. It's done already. And if we zoom out now, we can see that this is the part of the country that you can access within uh, by car within 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And as you can see, they are separate objects, so you can switch them off and on independently. As you might have noticed, network calculation is not just one tool or one trick. It is a complete new set of tooling that you can use in your spatial study. Depending on the question at hand, you'll be using a combination of tools to calculate what you need. This short introduction just covers the basic principles to help you get started.